ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقال عز وجل كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال عز وجل شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران الى اخر الايه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون <coughs> uh, today I'm going to inshallah do uh, two things at least. In the last day of Sha'ban, the day before Ramadan, and because the Prophet was the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knew, or Allah had told him, that the next day will be Ramadan. On that, the night of Sha'ban, before Ramadan, meaning after Maghrib, he had given this khutbah. I have the English translation, but I'll be referring to some of the Arabic terminologies the Prophet ﷺ used. <laughs> so, in that last day of Sha'ban, before the day of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya yuhannas, O mankind, O people, a great and blessed month has arrived for you. Ya yuhannas, qad adalla alaykum shahrun azimun, shahrun fiha, a month this month, meaning in this, if you want to understand the greatness of this month, in this month there is one day, a month in which, wherein there is a night, shahrun fiha laylatun khayru min alfi shahr. A month in which one day is more than a thousand months, just one day in that month. And in a sense, every Muslim catches laylatul qadr because you're alive during that time, whether whether you catch it doing ibadah or something good is one thing, but we all catch it in a sense that it's, it passes over us knowingly or unknowingly. So the Prophet ﷺ says, O mankind, a great month has overshadowed you. Actually, these words of the Prophet, the, a great, the month, a great month is overshadowing, meaning coming to you. In this month is a night that is better than a thousand months. Fasting. Fasting during this month is an obligation. Siyamuhu fariba. This is what the Prophet said. And the staying up at night doing qiyamul layl, meaning reading the taraweeh prayer or doing salawat in the end of that, the Prophet said. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ سَيَامَهُ فَرِيضَةً وَقِيَامَهُ تَتَوَّعًا The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that fasting in that day is made obligatory, you have to do it. And standing up at night has been made a preference. You should definitely do it if you can. Anyone who comes closer to Allah through a good deed during this month is as if he performed an obligatory duty. Meaning if you do any extra ibadat, anything extra is equal to an, a farila. Anything tatawwa'a, anything voluntary is farila. And any farila is ka'annahu, as if it is sab'ina faridatan. It is as if he did 70 obligatory acts. So if you pray like Salat al-Dhuhr, which is Fart, it's like you prayed 70 Salat al-Dhuhr. If you pray a Sunnah prayer or a Nafil prayer, it is like you pray a Fart prayer. 
The Prophet ﷺ then said, And he who fulfills an obligatory duty in it will be like the one who fulfills 70 obligatory duties in any other month. وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الصَّبْرِ The Prophet said وسلم, that this is the month of patience. وَجَزَاءُهُ جَنَّةِ And the reward of patience is Jannah. If you have patience, you get Jannah. Like Allah says in the Quran also, in Allah sabirin Allah is with the people that are patient. Sometimes, uh, just as a side point, when we are in a state of anxiety or we're in being impatient, actually at that time is the time where Allah is with you. In Allah sabirin The Prophet said, وسلم, it is the month of visiting the poor. وَهُوَ شَهْرُ مُسَاوَاتِ this is the month where the poor and the rich, you can say, they we feel each other. It is the month in visiting of the poor, the sick, and the needy as to share their sorrows. Because by fasting, you at least, you know, one day, someday during Ramadan, you're going to be in a hot pickle. Where you're going to be hot. No matter if you, whatever luxury lifestyle you may be living, but one day, you know, you're going to be in that heat just like anyone else and you're not going to have food and water and you won't have that luxury. So Allah will give you a taste of the rest of the majority of mankind. It, it came to my notice just a few days ago that it's interesting, even in America, one-fifth of one out of every five kid in America is malnourished. One out of every five kid in America is malnourished, is going hungry. It's amazing. So the Prophet said, it is the month of visiting of the poor, the sick and the needy, so as to share the sorrows. It is the month where nourishment and sustenance, rizq, and income, the risk of the believers are increased. The risk, yabsitu is the risk, these, the, meaning your business, your income, it will come to an increase. Then the Prophet said, anyone who invites another to break fast at iftar will be provided with forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sins and saved from the hell and will receive equal reward to the fasting person who he helped break the fast. This was the khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ, but then now you can say a companion of the Prophet said, we are poor. We don't have the ability to help other people break fast. So one of the companions, companions of the Prophet said, ﷺ, not all of us may find food to share with one so that he can break his fast. And also this statement, I know we love this statement that, you know, We'll do the iftar of the other person, we'll get his reward and but the companion just to make just to it be clear, the state of the companions of the Prophet was that they already had no food. And then they were sharing food. So this was their practical situation on the ground. So this is why one of the companions says, Not all of us may find food to share with one that had the, so that he could break fast. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will reward you even if you help a fasting Muslim break his fast with a date, the tamar. Even if you take that date and break it in half and give it to your brother, Allah will give you that reward. Or a sip of water. Or a drink of milk. So this was practically their situation when the Prophet said, help each other break the fast. It is a month, its beginning is rahmah, mercy. Awaluhu rahma. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, its middle part is maghfirah. Wa akhiruhu itqum min al And the last of this month, the last part of this month, the last one third is freeing yourself, your neck from the hellfire. Now, what is the difference between rahma and forgiveness and itqum min al Or what is the difference between rahma, maghfirah, and itqum min al I won't go into this right now, but Rahma is on the positive side. Itqum min al is on the negative side. You got 
Meaning, the whole point, one of the things about this month is that it should not be ever the case that a Muslim goes through this 30-day period and is not forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ cursed a person that gets the chance of being through the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's seen as like you have this opportunity uh, and if you don't take advantage of it, it's uh, seen as a very negative thing. So the Prophet said وسلم, its beginning is mercy, its middle is forgiveness, and its end is uh, freeing yourself from the hellfire. Anyone who helps a slave to be freed, Allah will forgive him and free him from hell. <coughs> Increase in yourselves four characteristics, the Prophet said. Two of which will please Allah and two of which you must have. The first two qualities to please Allah are to bear witness that there is no divine other than Allah and to ask Allah for forgiveness. Keep asking Allah for forgiveness, meaning in this month. However, the two things that you cannot live without when in concerning this month, to ask Allah for paradise and to ask Him for protection from the hellfire. And there is a, there are different, uh, small different opinions about how this hadith ends, but I'm just relating to you the, the general form. The Prophet said, anyone who gives water to a Muslim at iftar, Allah will give him water during the day of, on the day of judgment from the fountain of the Prophet وسلم, which will, will make him not feel thirsty till he enters paradise. This is, uh, hadith is recorded by Imam Bahati. Uh, and so this, I just wanted to share with you. So this was the khutbah the Prophet Wasallam gave the one day before Ramadan and they were going to fast and, uh, and so this is the khutbah that he gave. Now, inshallah in my second khutbah I will continue on the same topic. I was going to talk about another topic but inshallah I'm going to talk about this and a few other things that are related. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمين. إن الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأحب العقدة من لساني يفكه قولي So let me start by saying I want to discuss two issues. I'm not sure if I want to discuss the second issue, but this issue I do want to discuss. And I have talked about this many times, but because this is the month of Ramadan, it's needed to be talked about again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahur Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. This month is Ramadan, it's special because, why? Shahur Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. This is the month in which Allah has revealed the Qur'an. This is why it's special. And as I have mentioned in a previous lecture that I gave here, why Allah asks us to fast in this month. This relationship between Qur'an and Sayyam should be understood. Because Sayyam, by fasting, you put yourself in a state of taqwa. When you're fasting, your schedules are changed. By the way, this is also something important to know. When you're fasting, your schedules are changed. You don't eat at your normal time. You're not sleeping at your normal time. You're not doing anything in your normal time. This is the perfect time for transformation. When your habits are no longer the same, because one thing is you have schedule, right? You have stability. So you're, if you have stability, then you're stuck with your program. You're stuck with your daily routines. But when Ramadan comes and you're not eating and you're not drinking and your whole schedule is upside down, 
then this is the perfect time to bring transformation into your life. Because by not having your normal schedule, you can now create a new schedule that enhances your spirituality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السَّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah has ordained fasting for you like He did for the people before. For, for what reason? What's the result? By not eating and drinking. What happens every time? You know, eating is the most basic survival need. The most, most basic human instinct is eating. So every time you feel like eating, you have to remind yourself, Oh, I can't eat. I, oh, okay, I can't eat. Okay, I can't eat. What happens? You're training your mind and yourself to become obedient to Allah. Even though it's something very simple. You know, it's just like in sales, they have this thing in, in sales uh, psychology. When you're trying to sell something, you get the customer to say yes three times before you offer him the final, oh, do you like the car? Yes. Uh, something else? Yes. So you'd really like to have it? Yes, I'd like to really have it. Now that you've gotten him in the mode of saying yes, right? Now you give the final punch. Okay, well, it's going to cost this much. He's already in the flow of saying yes. You've gotten him to say yes three times. Chances are higher that now when you make the final punch and the final offer, he's going to say yes the fourth time. The point I'm trying to make is you get him in a certain flow and then he goes with that flow. The chances are higher. The same thing here. When you're fasting in the month of Ramadan, you're in a certain flow. You're reminding yourself of Allah and the fact you have to obey Him and the fact you can't eat. You're reminding yourself at a much more higher frequency than normal. And so you're already putting yourself in a state where you are being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're not eating. It's something very basic but very, very, uh, very basic at the instinctive level. So, especially in the beginning, the first few times you wake up uh, in the morning and you have to go and you're fasting, you have to remind yourself, okay, I can't have a drink, okay, I can't do this, I can't do this. Then later on a time comes where you don't have to remind yourself. But the point is, this is the perfect time where you're in a flow of transformation. So, why is it that Muslims, we fast and we go through this process and we go through the mechanics of fasting, but sometimes it doesn't really make that type of transformation that it made for the companions of the Prophet. Now, I was saying this, that by fasting during the day, you're teaching yourself to be obedient to Allah. Now, that is the prerequisite, taqwa. Taqwa is the prerequisite, the currency you need. Reminding yourself, I have to obey Allah, I have to obey Allah, I have to obey Allah. Reminding yourself that the, the currency you need to get guidance from Quran. This is why Allah says, This is the book in which there's no doubt it is guidance for people to have taqwa. Fasting gives you taqwa. Not only you're fasting, not eating when Allah says, but you're also eating when Allah says. This is also a big part of the sharia that you should break iftar as soon as possible. So you're not just delaying it. It's not your whim. You have to break it when Allah says and you're not. You're keeping it when Allah says. So in the same way, now that you have put yourself in a higher level of obedience to Allah, at whatever level you are, you're a little bit higher. Now that, how much higher you are in a state of obeying Allah, that difference of obedience, that taqwa, is your currency to gain access to the Qur'an. So Allah says, this is guidance for who? Who have taqwa. Fasting has been given, for, for what reason? To have taqwa. So in the daytime you're fasting, so that at the night time when you're reading Qur'an, when the Qur'an says do this and don't do this, just like when you're fasting, you're not allowed to do things. When Qur'an says do this and don't do this, you're able to bring yourself to the point where you can do what Qur'an wants. I mentioned this last time too. These two things have not only been combined in the Qur'an. In, you know, if you do tafsir, uh, Qur tafsir, if you do tafsir of Qur'an, Qur'an bil Qur'an, but also have been brought in by the riwayat of the Prophet So the point I'm trying to make is this, and then I'll tell you the hadith. 
that in the daytime you're fasting, the result is taqwa. Taqwa is the key you need to be able to absorb Qur'an into yourself. So, so, but the real purpose is closeness to Allah through the Qur'an. Now, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ صَامَ بِهِ Meaning, whoever fasted in this month, مَنْ صَامَ بِهِ إِبَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَخَرْ Whoever fasts in Ramadan, making calculation and being careful and having preparation and iman, whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with preparation, Allah will forgive his sins. And then the Prophet says in the next statement, وَمَنْ قَامَ بِهِ And whoever stands up at its nights, وَمَنْ قَامَ بِهِ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَرْ Allah will also forgive the sins of the person who stands up at the nights of Ramadan. So these two things. Sayyam, fasting, and Qiyam through Qur'an. وَمِنْ لَيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِصْفَهُ أَوْ إِنْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِدَ عَلَيْهِ وَرَدِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْضِيلًا This is what it is. And in the, in the night time, you're spending time with Qur'an. Daytime, you're fasting so you can have that taqwa. This is why the Prophet ﷺ also said, القرآن والصيام يشفآن The Prophet said, the Qur'an and Sayyam, they will do shifa for you on the Day of Judgment. Al-Qur'an wa Sayyam yashfa'an. So, these two things have to be combined. In the daytime you're fasting, the result should be taqwa. Then that taqwa is now used to access Qur'an. So what is it that I want from you? Every Muslim owes Qur'an five things. Number one, to believe in Qur'an, understood. Number two, to read Qur'an. Number three, to understand Qur'an. Number four, to uh, act upon Qur'an. To understand Qur'an, act upon Qur'an. Number five, to teach Qur'an. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ الَّذِينَ يَتْنُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَابَةِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ This is ayah of the Qur'an. Whoever, those people who read it properly as it should be read, they're the ones who believe in it. By the way, I have a Tajweed class today. Please come, uh, bring your children, kids, adults, everybody come. I'll try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, I do want to also discuss some of the miracles of the, of the Tajweed of Qur'an. Just the Tajweed itself has many miracles in it. Uh, that I would, uh, I will go over, inshallah. Even you know, even even the, the the basic things. I mean, I know this is not the subject right now, but even basic things, like for example, awesome means what heart, right? But it's awesome. It's difficult to say awesome. Yusuf means easy. It's easy to say yusuf. So also is hard to even like at that level where the words, the way they come out give the effect of the meaning over and over again throughout the whole Qur'an. It's actually very miraculous. Uh, anyway, I was saying, what can you do with Qur'an this month? Every Muslim should make it a goal to read Qur'an for themselves. Read Qur'an for yourselves. Read Qur'an with your own eyes so you feel like this is really Allah talking to me. You have to bring yourself at a level with the Qur'an where you feel like that if you were a non-Muslim and you had read the Qur'an that you would have become Muslim. You should feel like that I know the Qur'an so much that if I was not Muslim and I know the Qur'an the way I know it today, I would have definitely become Muslim. How can you put in that? You have to put in that effort in this month of Ramadan. You have to get to know the Qur'an. A lot of you have become experts in your fields. In Qur'an, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ Allah has made Qur'an easy. But you just need to give time. You need to give time to Qur'an and Qur'an will give you back much more. So, to the brothers and to the sisters, this month of Ramadan, make it part of your schedule on how you will connect to the Qur'an. How will you connect to the Qur'an? How will you find your Qur'an? You know, this is actually a very interesting concept if you hear from me, your Qur'an. Because the Qur'an says, we have the Qur'an in it, in this Qur'an, Allah says, is your mention. You have to find, make it a goal when you're reading Qur'an, 
And when you're reading the translation of the Quran, can you find yourself, can you find those verses of the Quran that when you're reading Quran, you're feeling like, I feel like he's talking about me. I feel like Allah is talking about me in this verse. Can you find yourself in Quran? And in this Quran, is your mention is there. It's for all of humanity, but Allah has something in it so that every human being feels, oh, this, this, is, this is talking about me. This is about me. That's the type of, that's the beginning of a relationship. That's the beginning of a relationship when you start feeling, what is the proofs? شَهُرْ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتِ There's the bayinat proofs. Quran is the word of Allah. That's one aspect. But evidences don't make relationships. Evidences are, you know, aql. They're your intelligence. Relationships are men, are, are something that's a connection. And the connection happens between two people when you feel like he, he relates to me, I relate to him. Oh, he relates to me. Allah, Allah can be Allah and you can have all the evidence that Allah is Allah. But if you don't feel like he relates to you, that he knows you, until that doesn't happen, the connection doesn't happen. One is conviction. This is the truth. It's conviction. One is connection. Connection is personal. You have a personal connection. When you read Quran and you feel like, oh, he's talking about me. So, you should, we should bring ourselves to that level. That if we were not Muslims and we, we have so much knowledge of Qur'an, that had we read Qur'an, we would have become Muslim. And we have so much uh, personal relationship with Qur'an, that you feel like, oh, these parts of the Qur'an, they're talking about me. That's me right there in Qur'an. Then that builds connection. Anyway, uh, inshallah we will end here um, Again I want to remind you I will be doing the Tajweed class I will be using Fatiha as part of my template Of the Tajweed class To make it easy Everybody knows Fatiha But I'll be going over, over some things And then I'll be going over You know, if I, I don't think I'll have time to go over All the six, at least the six major rules But I will go over some of the rules Of Ikhfa and Idlam And so on and so forth Um so let's end inshallah with dua and make intention that you will do your absolute best this Ramadan to build a relationship with the Quran inshallah. Rabbana atina dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhab anna. Rabbana zalamna hasana wa illam taghfil lana wa tarhamna lanakunna min al-khasirin. Allahumma taj'al Quran rabiya qulubina. Allahumma arhamna bil Quran al-azim. واجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم بارك لنا في هذه الشهر رمضان إنك أنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمركم بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة Everybody please come forward